Big applause because he was. Wait, wait, wait. First, he was. Uh, how do you say? I can say it in Danish and Spanish. At the hospital for more than 24 hours due to, yes, something. So, and he actually managed to come here today. So I think he res he deserves a really, really big applause. Thank you, Andy, for coming. <laughs> Oh, for, uh, I was in the hospital for the last three days, believe it or not. I was on the beach in Sitges, and I thought that literally I had died and gone to heaven because it's so beautiful, and then I almost really did die. So uh, that's what I get for thinking I had uh, gone to heaven. But uh, anyway, I did get released from the hospital yesterday. I told the doctor, I have to get to Barcelona to share these remarks. And she said, I'll let you go for 48 hours, but I have to go back because I had a kidney stone the size of a five carat diamond. I'm just gonna let you think about that for a second. Think about how you pass a kidney stone. Anyway, <laughs> the pain is unbearable. I hope none of you ever have to go through it. Uh, congratulations to the organizers of this conference. I love what I've seen when I arrived here. Um, after being in the hospital for three days, it was so rejuvenating to see no suits and great spirit, an innovative spirit. And I, let, let's be, yeah, let, let's be very clear. I'm wearing a coat, not because I believe in this crap, suits, but because I've been eating way too much paella, okay? <laughs> so listen, I came here and, and Victoria, because I got out of the hospital, are you gonna give me two extra minutes in case I go over, okay because I, I, I have a bad habit of just sharing what is in my heart. Um, so I am the former senior advisor to a man named Joe Biden. You might have heard who, who that is. I'm also the former chief financial officer and senior advisor to a man named Al Gore. You might have heard who that is, the godfather arguably of climate change. And of course, uh, my boss, my former boss is now the president of the United States. Uh, it was a privilege to serve both of them. I'm a regulatory public policy attorney, and I'm here wearing a different hat. I now sit on six corporate boards. One of those boards is a company called Transparent Business. We're really excited about a product we're about to introduce to the marketplace, and I came all the way from the hospital to just tell you all about it, okay? And so that's what I'm here to share with you. But I wanna share a few thoughts with you because the title of my remarks, when I gave it to Victoria, uh, I, after on the airplane ride, I realized that was the stupidest title I could ever have given her, right? Because I said, the next crypto has to solve volatility. Volatility will never be solved, right? It, we, crossing the street is volatility. Driving in a car is volatility. And investing in crypto or any type of investment will always have some level of volatility. So the real title, Victoria, should have been, what did I change it to? must mitigate volatility. Damn it, I look good in that picture. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, uh, Hollywood can do crazy things. We'll talk about that in a second. So let me tell you, one of the things I've learned in my 60 years of life is that if we aren't constantly growing, evolving, learning, right? Then we're just a failure. That's how I view life. You're a loser if you're not constantly learning, growing, evolving. And your generation, and I say that because I am so freaking excited about the fact that the future is sitting in this room. Like you are the future of this world. And I, I felt so sick the last three days and you're making me feel so much better knowing that the future of this world is in your hands. And it is so beautiful to see your generation taking control and controlling the destiny of our world. Um, and so on that note, let me say to you, we can't stop learning, evolving and growing as people, but we can't stop learning, evolving and growing in business. We can't stop learning, evolving and growing in the crypto sector. 
And that's what I want to share with you. What we're going through right now, you know, the media wants us to believe it's dead. It's never going to revive. It's over. I mean, this is like, they call it what, the crip apocalypse? I can't even say the word. I mean, there's all kinds of propaganda in the media about the, the death of crypto. That is just, excuse my language, that's just bullshit, as we say where I grew up in Texas. Uh, crypto is here to stay. It is an integral part of our future. It is the future of currency, in my opinion. And on that note, I just wanted to share with you that I think what we've got to do, though, is look at what's happening, recognize why we're going through such turbulent times in the crypto market sector, and learn from it and evolve from it, and grow from it, and take from it what we can do to make it better. And so that's what I wanted to, I came all the way over here just to share this with you, because we believe we have a product that will address that volatility. So we think the future and next generation of crypto has to be a hybrid model. We've got to take what's best of what's working, blockchain, right, and other aspects of the current crypto market and combine it with what works from traditional investment platforms like a venture capital investment fund. So what we believe is the next generation of crypto has to bring the best of both worlds together. Why? That volatility that I mentioned, that's what's scaring people. It didn't scare your generation, and that's why you created crypto, because you guys are fierce and amazing. And I see you, we see you, we hear you. We know what you were trying to do with crypto. You want to participate in the system. You want access. You want people to leave you alone so that you can also grow wealthy, so that you can also aspire and reach your dreams. I get it. But I think right now what we've got to learn from the current turbulence and from the volatility, it is extreme. We have to acknowledge that. And so I think what we believe is the next step is this hybrid model. So what we're bringing to the marketplace later this year is a new crypto called Unicoin. U-N-I-C-O-I-N. You can go to unicoin.com. It's very easy to learn more about it. Unicoin was, came out of, it was birthed by that picture of me right there is on the set of a Hollywood show called Unicorn Hunters. I hope you all go watch the show. I co-created the TV show. I co-star in it. I co-executive produce it with people like Steve Wozniak, the Woz, the co-founder of Apple, Lance Bass from NSYNC, Rosie Rios, the former United States treasurer. We just finished taping season three. It's a really awesome show. And what we do is we allow one future unicorn company per episode to come make their pitch to the world. We're now averaging between five and eight million viewers per episode around the world. And so those companies that come onto our show get to make their pitch to the world. Why? Because I was tired of the fact, the same reason you guys started crypto, you didn't have access. The average startup, the average entrepreneur, the average person in the world doesn't have access to venture capital. Less than one and a half percent of venture capital in the world, just as an example, goes to women. Less than one and a half. I could not stand for that. That's ridiculous. Absurd. And so I created the show because I wanted people to have access. So I wanted the janitor in Cambodia the teacher in El Salvador, the cafeteria worker in Thailand to have the same chance as the Wall Street fat cat in New York City or the doctor in St. Louis. So that's what the show does. It gives the viewer anywhere in the world the chance to invest in a potential unicorn. So from that came our unicorn, our new crypto. Because we believe what we saw was you guys, everybody wants access, access to the ecosystem, right? So what we are doing is we're taking the blockchain technology, all that is good from crypto as we know it today, and combining it with an innovative investment fund, very much like a venture capital fund. So when you buy Unicoin next year or later this year when we tokenize, you'll, be, you'll actually be 
investing in a fund that will be taking an equity stake in those types of companies that come on our show. So you'll be able to follow your unicorn as it's being invested. This fund invests in these, this equity stake in these companies. You get to watch them grow. Some of them may not grow. But it will be a, you bringing the two worlds together. So what will it be? The next generation, in our opinion, to remitigate that volatility will be asset-backed and crypto that is asset-backed and believe it or not, dividend paying. That is the goal. That annually at a minimum, we will pay dividends to the unicorn holders that result from liquidity events in those emerging growth future unicorn companies. We believe that that is the way you mitigate volatility. Transparency, operational infrastructure. Can you imagine to bridge these two worlds where we can actually, we're all over the world right now marketing unicorn in the pre-sale phase, right? Before we tokenize, building the brand. Uh, unfortunately, and fortunately, that face is on the side of buses all over Los Angeles. And in every airport in America, there are all kinds of signs about our show and the coin. Yes, I know, I, I agree with you, it's scary, isn't it? The thought that this face is on the side of a bus. But that we're out already telling the world because we want to build brand awareness because we really believe passionately crypto has to be a part of our future. It will be a part of our future. We want to do it in a new generation of crypto. We want to do it in a way that removes some of that volatility that's keeping the majority of the world out of crypto. Okay? So we want to mitigate the fear and, and take away a little bit of that reluctance and that reticence and so we believe this is the way to do it, this hybrid model uh, and bringing the two worlds together. I'm going to go one, two extra minutes. Thank you. You're so sweet. I'm going to do something probably that wasn't supposed to do. Any questions? Come on now. Not even about Donald Trump? No questions? Nobody cares about my coin? Come on. Thank you. Did y'all hear that? It's a but, wonderful but product. Yeah, what, what, I mean, yeah, I have a question, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because so, I mean. If I don't take this now, I'm yeah. sorry, I will forget it. <laughs> so if I invest in your fund, I mean, like, hmm? I'm based in Spain. I yeah. have a Danish nationality. Yeah. How, how is the whole legal thing structure going to work out to make sure that I have lawyer. an ownership? No, no, I'm not. To actually have. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, that was a little lawyer humor, sorry. I said it's between you and your lawyer. <laughs> uh, listen, it, it's, it's no different than any other fund that you would, any other coin you would be buying. It will be on an exchange and tradable in the first quarter. Of That's the goal. That's the goal. Let me be clear. These are goals, right? Uh, we intend to meet that timeline, but it'll be no different than buying any other crypto that you're buying. It'll be exchanged but, so, but and traded. But do I then have real ownership because you'll have shares in different startups, right? No, you will have, you will own a unicorn or hopefully thousands of them, right? And you will own unicorns. The value of those unicorns will come from the value and the growth of those companies that that fund has invested in. Does that make sense? Okay. Totally. Any other questions? <laughs> yes, hi. It is a security token. Thank you for asking that. I'm, I, I'm 60 and just out of the hospital, so not everything's working right. Well, that's a great question, and thanks for asking that because I was just, I think, interviewed in BBC and uh, Fox Business, and I've been all over the media on this question of regulation because of my relationship with the president. And, of course, as you might have read, uh, Europe, as usual, uh, uh, I give you all so many kudos and credit and applause and love because you're always so damn far ahead of us in the United States. We're just so far behind you in so many ways, uh, including regulation. Uh, but as you might have seen, President Biden did issue an executive order, uh, and I speak on this topic quite often. I don't want to take up more time, but let me answer it very quickly for you. Uh, look, I would say to all of you, um, the crypto sector and blockchain sector and those of you in tech seem to uh, overwhelmingly have some type of a, 
a hatred toward regulation or a fear of regulation or a reticence. Let's not be too dramatic. But you don't tend to like it. And I just want to share something with you that I've learned in my 60 years of life. We're not going to stop regulation, guys. We're, we're just not. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. It, it is going to happen. So my advice to all of us is that we should embrace it. But by embracing it, I do not mean to enable bad regulation. There's a difference between regulation that stifles innovation. That's bad. There's a bad regulation that keeps people out of a system. It tells you what you can't do. Regulation to tell us how we can. You understand the difference? The difference between negative, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. That's crazy. That's bad. But regulation's coming. It is going to be part of our lives. It's inevitable. But we need to work with them to create regulation that tells us how we can how can we do this? How can we accomplish this? How can we aspire? Right? So regulations coming, let's work with these governmental entities to create regulations that work for us. At the end of the day, it's ours anyway. They're, we are who they're regulating. So my advice to you from all my two White House tenures and being a regulatory lawyer is don't, let's stop pushing them away, go and get in the room. Get at the table. You have the right to be at the table and work with the regulators to develop regulation that creates and encourages innovation, that encourages all of you here to go every day and keep doing what you're doing to come up with the solutions for the future. Because all of you have that power. So I know I'm way past. And I, I, have, I have a quick question. My mom over there, she was asking me how much is a hola, unicorn. Hola, hola. <laughs> well, well, she's from Spain, but she's been living for 47 years in Denmark. So, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not allowed to say how many years. Oh, so, so she's European. Ma'am, ma we're probably the same age, so don't worry. <laughs> we both look fabulous, okay? <laughs> so the question is, how much is a unicorn? It is today, right now, selling for 10 cents. 10 cents. 10 cents a unicorn. Mm -hmm. That's it. And you can go to unicorn.com right now in, in the pre-sale phase. Uh, we have some investors who are uh, thinking they're going to close this round. The next round will be 25 cents. Oh. Yeah. So you need so, to be hurried. <laughs> you need so to hurry. started at a penny. So went Thank to a nickel you. and now we're at a dime. Thank Guys, you, Mo. You're awesome. You are keep, awesome. Keep making the world a better place, okay? Thank you.